Good morning, welcome to Christ the King's Morning Prayer Service. This is Thursday, beginning of February, February 1st. The opening sentence is from Malachi, chapter 1, verse 11. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. But my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. The confession of sin on page 12. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant to most merciful Father for his sake that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord's name be praised. The Epiphany Antiphon is on page 29. The Lord has shown forth his glory. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Will come, let us adore him. We'll now have a portion of Psalm 78, and then we'll have an additional scripture reading. Uh, Psalm 78 is found on page 371 in your Book of Common Prayer. We will read this responsibly by whole verse. Many times they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. He turned back and tested God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his power, nor the day when he delivered them from the hand of the enemy. How he had wrought his miracles in Egypt and his wonders on the field of Zoan. He turned their waters into blood so that they might not drink of the rivers. He sent flies among them which devoured them up and frogs to destroy them. He gave their fruit to the grasshopper and their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones and their sycamore trees with the frost. He smote their cattle also with hailstones and their flocks with hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the furiousness of his wrath, anger, displeasure, and trouble, sending these, these destroying angels among them. He made a way for his indignation and did not spare their soul from death, but gave their life over to pestilence. And smote all the firstborn of Egypt the first fruits of their strength and the dwellings of Ham. But as for his own people, he led them forth like sheep and carried them in the wilderness like a flock. He brought them out safely and they were not afraid. 
He overwhelmed their enemies with the sea. And brought them within the borders of his holy land to his mountain, which he obtained with his right hand. He cast out the nations before them and caused their land to be divided among them for an inheritance and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. But they tested and displeased the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies. But turned their backs and fell away like their forefathers, <laughs> twisting aside like a broken bow. For they grieved him with their hill altars and provoked him to displeasure with their images. When God heard this, he was full of wrath and utterly rejected Israel. So that he forsook the tabernacle in Shiloh, even the tent that he had pitched among them. He delivered the ark into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over to the sword and was angry with his inheritance. Fire consumed their young men and their maidens had no marriage songs. Their priests were slain with the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. When the Lord awakened as one out of sleep, and like a warrior recovered from wine, he drove his enemies backward and put them to a perpetual shame. He rejected the tabernacle of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, even the hill of Zion, which he loved. And there he built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven, like the earth which he had established forever. He chose David his servant and took him away from the sheepfolds. As he was following the ewes that were great with young, God took him, that he might feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them with a faithful and true heart and guided them with skillful hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our reading, our reading for today Our reading today continues in John. Uh, beginning with the 16th chapter, the 16th verse. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is this? And he says to us, a little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this, is, is this what you were asking yourselves, what I meant by saying a little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. <clears throat> so also, you will have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I come from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. 
Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for today is the Kyrie Pantocrator, which means Lord, the creator of everything. It can be found on page 81. O Lord and ruler of all the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned. O oh Lord, I have sinned. And I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer unto you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me, you will show forth your goodness. <clears throat> Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. And then we have the Apostles' Creed on page 20. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. We call it of the day. O God, we know that we are set in the midst of many dangers, and, and because of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant that your strength and protection may support us in all dangers and carry us through every temptation through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is Thursday, and on Thursday we have a particular prayer focus for the Anglican Diocese of the Southwest. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your love for us and your mercy. And I would especially ask for journey mercies for Father Pete as he's traveling to a conference and that the conference would build up and edify all those in attendance. Lord God, I lift up the Diocese of the Southwest, the very large geographic region. Um, help it to be covered by your angels, by your Holy Spirit, that it may do your will at all times, in all places, and that your love will blanket this area. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we do ask you especially to put a blanket covering of grace and your guidance and your leading over Bishop Stephen, over our diocese and all those who are in roles of leadership. <clears throat> especially we ask that for Father Pete, uh, not only as he leads our church, but in his various roles, leadership roles in the diocese and his role as a, as a wise counselor to our bishop. Um, we ask especially that um, Gus and Tim and all the men who are in roles of leadership would be given the grace to take a deep breath and be, be given the gift of um, extraordinary organization and uh, be given a chance to take a deep breath, look farther down the road and uh, see which things really must be done and which things perhaps are not as important. This is a huge diocese. There are so many moving parts. And at some point in every organization, whether it be a, a local church or a diocese, there just has to be someone in place who is gifted at figuring out which things can be set aside and which things must be done. And so we ask, Lord, that you give that gift to all the men who are in place and are responsible for organization so that uh, the things that have to be decided by the bishop are decided by him and the things that must be decided by others are taken care of by them. Um, and I ask also that that be true on our church level, that uh, volunteers who need to step forward and take care of the day-to-day -day stuff will feel moved to do so. <clears throat> and as significant things change in our church family, that uh, people will step forward and help take care of the day-to-day -day work. Help each one of us, Lord, um, know the things we are to do and give us the grace and the courage and the wisdom to do those things in a way that brings you honor. All these things we ask in your name. We continue with a prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you've given us grace this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.